Eric Mwade with yet another mentorship video. In this educational video, I'm going to be taking a look at a question that I get all the time, which is once you've determined a buy point in a stock of or um, forex trading or any type of currency trading, once you've determined, let's say that this is on a monthly or a daily or a weekly chart, so this stock would come and make a high. So that closing high becomes your um, level to watch. Let's just call that price X. And then you have at least two weeks of rest if it's a weekly chart. So on the weekly chart, we know that you need two weeks of rest below this closing high. On a daily chart, you need at least two days of rest before the move above this closing high on a monthly chart it's one month so just recapping what we already know um, so let me take that off so not to confuse you but the key here is the question is once you have a predetermined price level let's say the price was X and you know that you've set an alert Now that the stock is trading underneath that closing high here, should the stock ever move above this level and you trigger an alert, what do you do? If it's on a monthly chart, if it's on a weekly chart, or if it's on a daily chart. So the confusion comes uh, into where or what to do when the breakout takes place let's say on a monthly chart let's say the monthly trigger point was x do you wait for the end of the month if it's on a weekly chart the determination of the buy point is on a weekly chart do you wait for the conclusion of the week to buy after you've already had this alert after price x has been broken to the upside on a daily chart do you wait for the end of day so all these are good questions, but quite frankly, the answer is very simple. Your buy point is going to be at the very time when you get the alert. So you don't wait for the end of day. You don't wait for the end of the month. You don't wait for the end of the week. Once you get your alert after price X has been breached, that is when you simply make the trade. If it's a bullish trade, then you buy. You buy whenever or as soon as you see the stock break out. On a monthly chart, you buy it on the day, on the hour, on the minute of the breakout. On a weekly chart, you buy it on the day, the hour, and the minute of the breakout. On a day breakout, you buy it the hour and the minute of the breakout and ask questions later. Of course, it doesn't mean that once you buy, the stock has to stay above that price range. But to answer the question of when do you buy, you buy when you see your alert triggered. So once your alert has been triggered, you don't wait for the end of the period. Because keep in mind that all we are doing here is using the software or the tracking system on our, on our trading tools to let us know that there is a trade that could be beginning a fresh move. So once you see the alert triggered, your thinking now is to go and figure out whether you can um, look at other factors that you yourself might consider. It could be fundamental reasons, it could be technical reasons, but whatever it is. Once you get the alert, now you are looking to buy or to trade. You don't wait for the end of the month if it's a monthly breakout. You don't end for the. You don't wait for the end of the week if it's a weekly breakout. You don't wait for the end of the day if it is a daily breakout or an hourly breakout. You buy it once your trigger has been set. Now, why do you do that? What's the reasoning behind that? Because in truth, you don't know what's going to happen after the breakout. So once the stock triggers your buy, your preset buy alert, once it triggers it, you don't know whether it's going to move up slightly and fail. You don't know that it's going to move up for a couple of sessions and fail. You don't know that. And also you don't know that it could take off and never come back. 
So that's why you buy at the time of the alert because you don't know which one of these is going to take place. Of course, we all dream of owning stocks that just take off and never look back. And in fact, the best breakouts have that tendency of slicing through resistance and never looking back. That's why we buy at the point of trigger. Once the alert has been triggered, we are looking for every reason in the world uh, to confirm that on the charts or on the fundamentals or whatever it is you need to. Uh, to have your safety or at least have confidence in the trade if you're looking at volume for those of you who look at volume that's fine but once the alert has been set the stock is ready to be traded and of course if we are looking at the opposite if a stock was triggering a sell signal or a reason to go short and you trigger the price on the way down if it's on a monthly chart you take the trade on the day, on the hour, you see that short price being triggered. And it's the same thing. So you just flip the script. So the alert is your, your cue and also you're letting you know that there's a trade here that could be beginning. So you take the trade when it happens. Uh, you don't wait for the end of the session. And it's as simple as it is. Hope that makes sense. All right. Let's take a look at another question here that was poised to me. And I would like to answer that as a continuation of this um same kind of an understanding here. Let's take a look at an example here. This is MNST. And we've gone back, we're looking at a monthly chart going back to 2011. There was a one month of rest here. So it made a closing high there. You got one month of rest and now it's breaking out. If it breaks out, you buy it on the day, on the hour, on the minute. It breaks out. You ask questions later. Uh, just and because you're looking at this as a monthly breakout then you have to give this months you if you are using the month the monthly chart as your reason to go along then you have to give this many months to work out this is why you are using the monthly time frame if you are using the weekly charts then you have to give your ideas weeks to play out if you're using the daily chart solely for your main decision making, then you have to give your decisions at least days to play out. If you're using hourly charts, it's the same thing. You have to give your position a couple of hours to play out or at least to tell you what you thought the hourly charts were telling you. So every time frame has its own holding period. So if you're buying based on a prior monthly closing high, like in this example, you give this one two, three months, four months, five months, maybe even six months, maybe even nine months, maybe even one or two years if you're using the monthly chart. And what I'm saying here is once we determine what the buy point is, then we know that if it's a monthly buy point, then we give this months. The reason why I bring this up is I was, I was um, asked a question and let me go to what the question was. It was for a breakout I had sent to subscribers recently. It is for NTES and I had set the alert here for this to move above 105 and change. And the trigger point on this one was 105.67 which is this monthly closing high. Because it was based on a monthly chart and solely on a monthly chart as a reason why this was a good breakout, breaking out above the prior monthly closing high. Remember, we already see that it gave us one month of rest. On monthly charts, we only need one month of rest. And so once it breaks out, once this is triggered with a move above one or 5.67 5.67 now you can consider buying also i was looking at this and seeing that the rsi was remaining above 69.1 which tells me this is a very strong stock in a good market it could very easily take off and see uh the 120s the 130s if you go back to a prior breakout here after again another one month of rest which is the minimum requirement we have a breakout. Now that breakout 
also came when the RSI was trading above 69.1 and you can see that took the stock from the mid to higher 80s quickly to where it's trading now so that's a good gain in a couple of months and because this is a monthly chart you give it a couple of months so this would have been one one two three four four months down the road you've seen a nice gain and if I go back and show you that the MACDs were also doing what they need to do because the minimum requirement for a good breakout is MACD is moving to three year highs and this here was perfect you can see the other MACD setting was also moving to three year highs which again was perfect so everything was there so the question was if it is breaking out on the monthly do I buy here of course you buy it here yes it's slightly extended but if you're gonna give this many months to play out does it matter whether you buy it at 110 or 109 or 108? Not really. If you are looking to sell this in the 130s, for example, or in the 140s, if you are if you are lucky and the trade works out, what's the difference between buying it at 110, 109, 108? So the time frame also gives you uh, an idea of how long you wanna own this, because the alert was set on a monthly previous monthly closing high I was looking this to be one where you'd own for a couple of months three months five months six months however long it takes as long as it does not move back below the price which was the trigger point and that price was 105.67 now of course the stock could eventually come back to this price to test it or maybe closer to this price and then bounce and move higher stocks do tend to do that but because you don't know that the next move is gonna be this with the stock trading at 115 and you're gonna kick yourself for missing out on, at, on an opportunity so you buy it you can always buy one um, part of your uh, position now you can place a third of your position at this current price and see whether you get the same stock at lower prices to fill your position to a full 100% of what you wanted to buy. I don't want to confuse you. So if you wanted to buy 100 shares, as an example, you can always buy 33 now and see to buy the other 66 shares later. You might find them maybe at 105 or 107 or heck, 113. But you can always buy it at the current price and then see what's going to happen for the rest of the um, number of shares you are looking to buy so there's there's you don't have to make the the trade in one big trade you can always um, divide your position or your sizes of shares in chunks so in, if you wanted 100 shares you can buy 50 at one time and then you can buy the next 50 at another price to give your stock chance maybe to give you a better price so you take the trade when it takes place now the question was why are we buying it now when we haven't seen a two weeks of rest that was the question is if we buy the stock now it is not breaking out on a fresh weekly breakout that's true but remember the stock already rested here for a couple of weeks before finally breaking out so you are buying the breakout that already took place you're not buying a future breakout which would mean two weeks of rest and then a breakout eventually so you are buying the most recent breakout not a future breakout hope that makes sense um, just like when if you were to buy it here on hindsight you would have bought this breakout here with after two weeks of rest there was a breakout on week number four and you can see that that was also tested again after breaking out the market did eventually come here test that breakout and then move higher so this happens a lot that stocks can come and test their prior breakout level so yes you're not buying this on a fresh weekly breakout because we are using the monthly on this one there's no there's no set rule that you have to use all of the time frames if you're using the monthly the others can it's not a big deal that's what I was saying is because it's a it's a monthly uh, breakout 
candidate, we can just buy it and give it time. So there's no fresh breakout on the weekly. If you are buying this based on the monthly with the alert that I sent, you are buying this breakout. And of course you missed the ideal entry level, which was here at about 105.67. But you can also slightly chase it because it's not that extended from the ideal buy point of 105.67. And the rule of the thumb is you can buy anywhere between this price range and about 5% higher. So that range, so this range is okay. If you buy it within this range here, about 5% from the ideal buy point, which was here at 105.67. If you take a look at the daily, you ask the question, why are we not waking, waiting for two days of rest? Because you don't have to. You can if you want to. Nothing is stopping you from doing that, but you don't have to because again, why? Because we are using the monthly buy point. And so we are using the monthly charts, accepting that because it's a monthly chart, we are going to accept the volatility that comes with the daily and the, and the weekly charts because eventually we are looking to see this thing move higher over a, a series of many months. Now, if I go back to the um, monster beverage chart, this was in 2011 at $26. If I show you what happened next, you'll see that the breakout I was showing you on the prior chart was this breakout. And because you used a monthly chart, you give it many months. In this particular example, you can see that once it broke out and moved the RSI to three year highs and also moved the RSI above 69.1, and I, I do agree this is an ideal situation. Of course, I did, um, what's the word, cherry pick in talking about this. Um, and you need to cherry pick if you're going to use an example. So, you know, don't blast me for using a successful chart. But this is what happened. The stock held above 69.1 throughout this period from beginning of 2011 and for many months down the road. You can see it gave you other buy points here. There was a one month of rest and a breakout. So your entry on this monthly chart was here. And if you are buying the monthly, you don't care what the weeklies are doing and the dailies are doing necessarily, as long as your monthly chart stays good. And here it did. There was another breakout after a slight one month of rest, one down month. So the next breakout was here during this fresh move. And you buy it on the date breaks out on the hour it breaks out because your RSI continues trading above 69.1, 69.1, which you know is a great, um, great setup and, and a lot of strength. You can see here also moving from 26 initially and continues trading here in the 70s. There was another one month of rest on this monthly chart. And so you buy it on the next breakout. Once it's triggered, you buy it on the day, on the hour, on the minute, if you can, when that uh, takes place. So let's see what happens again down the road. Let me extend this a little bit and let's go back and see what happened. We can see that this breakout took the stock from here in the, I think there was a, let me just make sure that this is, I'm not, hum, okay. Looks like the breakout took place and the stock would go on to only move to the 80s. And honest, it's only after it did finally move back below 69.1 that the rally came to an end. So the break, the stock would eventually give you a sell signal once it moved below 60, which was when, once it moved below 69.1. But as long as during this period it gave you that entry, this entry, and also this entry there. So, so three successful breakouts, uh, any breakout that did not work, you get stopped out. So if you're using monthly charts, that's how you play it. And if you're using weekly charts, you use the weekly charts to give you uh, the holding period, which should be a number of weeks, anywhere from uh, a couple of weeks, maybe to a couple of months. On the daily, you use the daily buy point to hold the stock for a couple of days, uh, maybe a couple of weeks at best. So in conclusion, 
once you figure what your buy point is on the monthly chart of course we need one month down and then the subsequent breakout above this predetermined price X once you get that move above that price you want to buy on the day on the hour and on the minute if you can be that quick once the breakout is triggered you go along ask questions later that's true on the monthly on the weekly and the daily once you figure out your trigger point on weeklies and daily charts you demand two days and two weeks of rest either two days or either two weeks of rest so on the fourth week or on the fourth day you can buy once that is triggered you buy on the minute on the hour you see that trigger point you don't have to wait for the end of the week or end of the day and this is going to give you an idea into how long you want to hold on to the instrument also so that's in summary you buy the breakout when it takes place ask questions later you don't have to wait for the end of the session end of the period to determine your, your when to go along. The idea is that you're buying a breakout that is not going to look back even though they do but that's the theory behind it. You're buying with the idea that it doesn't come back after breaching and clearing uh, resistance or after it has broken through support if you are going short. So on the way down it is the same thing on the monthly charts after you figure out your, your trigger point you need one month up and on the third month which is now after one month of rest you can go short on a monthly chart if it's on a weekly chart or or on a daily chart all you are demanding is at least two weeks up and or at least two days up and on the fourth day or on the fourth week minimum that is minimum you, you can always be longer minimum you can if it goes down on the fifth week sixth week two years down the road then your trigger point is still good then that's when you take the trade and you take the trade on the daily after those two days on the weekly after those two weeks up so on the fourth week minimum that's when you go short and you go short on the day on the hour on the minute your trigger has been set. Hope that makes sense. If not, um, say, uh, send me a questions either by email or on the comment section of the video. Eric Moade, good luck, peace and blessings. I shall be back with more and more and more videos covering all sorts of topics. Woo!